I'm Marty Cohn, and welcome to BCTV's Meet the Candidates, a series that affords you an opportunity to learn about the folks that are running for office. Today, our guest is Anya Tino, the Republican candidate for U.S. House of Representatives. Welcome, Anya. Thank you for having okay. me. Okay. it. Thanks for coming all the way down. So, you're running for the first time for a political office to try and unseat a six-term incumbent, Democrat uh, Peter Welsh, in the November 6th election. Correct. Why? Lots of reasons why. Uh, one of the main ones is that I just feel that the state of Vermont needs better representation, more comprehensive representation, and the people's voice needs to be somebody that is in tune with the people, and I am. Great. All right. Well, the other thing, uh, you know, you're um, at 25, you're, you're the youngest an individual can be to run for the U.S. House. Yes, there are laws about how old you have to be. Well, but so, you, I, so, you, so you made that. I did. So, do you think that's an advantage? I do. I think that the youth in the state are leaving for better opportunity every day, and it takes somebody their own age to understand what they are seeking, what they need to do, and that's what I'm going to be there for. I work full time. I understand the struggles of just paying your bills, mm -hmm. all of these different things. So I think that that perspective in Washington is necessary. Oh, so tell, tell you, you, you work full time. What, what do you do? I work in advertising oh. for a newspaper. Okay. I'm an advertising executive for Newport Daily Express. Oh, one, okay. I, yes. I said that we were talking before. I vacationed there. I, I read that paper, yes. so that's, that's really good. So the, the, the last Republican to represent Vermont in the House I, I did. I went back and, and googled this. It's was been a Peter while. <laughs> Peter Smith in 1991? Been a while. Been a while. Do you think Vermont will go for a Republican? I think that they could. I think that this is the year where everything has changed so drastically in the political scene since the last election that it's very possible for a Republican to win the state of Vermont and to start turning things around. When you count from 1991, it's been quite a long time of single party leadership. It's always good to shake things up and get a fresh perspective. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, so what what issues do you think? You know, what what are the burning issues for? Let's let's break it down in terms of Vermont and then the country. If there's a difference between the the issues, there are some differences, and then there are a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Of course, being in U.S. House, my purview would be the nation, mm -hmm. and but. What is good for the state of Vermont is oftentimes going to be good for the United States. I think that people in general, when they are doing well, Vermonters are United States citizens, so when people are doing well, mm -hmm. then the country is doing well and the state's doing well. Uh, my focus will be on the top three things of my campaign, which is constitutional rights, preserving constitutional rights and uh, with a focus on the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. economy, growing our economy, working to bring jobs to the state and keep the young people here to work and to strengthen agriculture, which is something that the state of Vermont has been known for and built upon for centuries, if you will, and is now becoming almost obsolete in the state. And we need to work very hard to turn that trend around. So let, let's let's go into those those issues because you you uh, you listed them on your uh, on your website. Uh, yes. Anya for ushouse.com. Correct. Okay, Anybody wonderful. who would like some more information can go to Anya for ushouse.com and find that information. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter if you so have those things. Most people have Facebook, some have Twitter, but uh, I try to be accessible. Okay, that's great. That's great. So, so, so let's let's break down constitutional rights. The, yes. The, which constitutional rights are we talking about for you? What, all of them. All of them. Our, the Constitution guarantees us certain freedoms and liberties. Mm -hmm. And it is of grave concern to me that I see that those are constantly being whittled away at. And the Constitution is what we built this country upon. It is the law of the land, if you will. And it's very important that we maintain it as such, as written. By far the biggest one that is being chopped at is Second Amendment rights. And there's all kinds of conversation about safe gun control, mm -hmm. responsible gun control, but it is diminishing a freedom that has been guaranteed to us in the Constitution, and we need to protect that at all costs. Without being an armed country, we are no longer a completely free country. And it's important to maintain 
the right to protect ourselves, our property, our families, our homes. All of these things are very important, and that is what the Constitution guarantees us with the Second Amendment. So, uh, but in terms of the, uh, in terms of protecting us, we're talking about gun control, a big issue here in, mm -hmm. in, in Vermont. Uh, do you, is there, uh, are there levels of it? I mean, do, what about um, assault weapons? I mean, is that something? Constitution does not make provisions for assault weapons, but it's common sense when you read it that in the 1700s, they owned muskets and the people owned muskets, the government had muskets. Currently, we have semi-automatic and automatic weapons. The government has these and the people have these. This is how it translates. Right. It's important to maintain equality across the board. Okay, so, so you're saying because the government has assault weapons, we should have assault weapons? People should have? That's what the Second Amendment states I because of I'm, that. I'm asking you, though. Whether you have assault weapons open to the public, I think that there is a necessary look into why somebody is having them, and that's fine. There Currently, I believe it takes two years to purchase one of these weapons, and I think that most people would not choose to do so. Semi-automatic is more than sufficient for most people, but if they so choose to and are deemed no threat, then I don't see why they shouldn't be allowed to. Okay, and uh, economy was the second issue. Correct. Um, what, what do you think we should be doing for the economy that's not happening now? We need to change the landscape to bring business to the state of Vermont. We need to actively go after the businesses and ask them to come here and provide jobs for our populace because we do not currently have a very business-friendly state. Taxes and regulations are very prohibitive. New Hampshire, right across the river, does much better than we do in business, and we need to turn that around if we wish to maintain an economically viable com community and economy in general. Uh, okay, so I hear, it, but do you have any ideas in terms of how we would go about doing that? As I said, it's due to taxes and regulations and having somebody actually go out and talk to these businesses and tell them about the benefits of coming to the state. Like I said, actively go seek them. I'm in advertising. This is what I do. Right. I go talk to businesses all the time and tell them the benefits of using a product. I could do that for the state of Vermont and would be happy to do so. Okay. And then the third would, was uh, agriculture. Yes. Right? So what do we A personal do? passion of mine. Mm -hmm. I grew up in agriculture and managed dairy farm right out of high school. So I keenly aware of the struggles that they face every day. Mm -hmm. We need to also work on taxing and regulation and so forth to bring young people back into the agricultural field and make it an economically viable option to support them and their families. There are many people that would like to be in farming that are unable to do so due to the inability to get into it. And we are losing farms at such a rapid rate that we will soon experience a food crisis if this continues, and we need to turn it around. We also need to work towards taking care of the farms that are currently operational to keep them so. And I, my ultimate goal is to move government out of the agriculture. Is they have been in in it for so long and it's not been beneficial and we need to move it back to a private enterprise which it started out to be while taking care of them in the process of doing that. Okay. Now, uh, now I, I, I uh, visited your, your website um, mm -hmm. and um, Anya for ushouse.com. I'm going to get that in again. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And so very prominent on the, on the website, you, you're, uh, you declare yourself to be a conservative Republican. I am. Okay. Um, are there issues that you differ with President Trump? Because if you're down in Washington, you're going to be with, uh, with President Trump. With regards to the current administration, when I'm in Washington, I will need to have a working, friendly relationship and work towards it. I will say that on many issues, I am not in differentiation with the president. I agree with taxes and tariffs that he's put, leveling the playing field on the economic stage, working to build the economy. The economy is doing better than it has been in a very, very long time. Unemployment's the lowest in 49 years. All of these things I think everybody should be able to get behind. I think it's sad that politically people still avoid that issue, but it's true. If there are issues that we differ on, I am my own person and I'm sure that there, that could and would come up in the course of my working there, 
but I'm true to my beliefs and what I believe would be best for the country and the state of Vermont, and whether that differs with people or not doesn't change me. Okay. Well, now on, on, on the website, there was a fourth issue that you list, mm -hmm. and that's foreign policy. Correct. Um, so, you know, right now we're in the midst of a, um, a significant issue with foreign policy with regard to, to Saudi. Saudi Arabia. Correct. Um, you know, and, the, and there's a lot of question in terms of the, how the president's going to come out um, in, in, in on, on, uh, if, in fact, it's, it's proven that something happened. Do you, how, do, how do you think if, if the president, if it's found that, that, that there was something going on with, uh, with Saudi Arabia and that the uh, rulers were, in fact, involved in it, Mm -hmm. And we don't do something strong, or what should we do? What, how strong should we be? Let's well, I'll I phrase think, it that way. I feel that number one, we need to wait for all the facts to come in. We don't need to go off half cock. Saudi Arabia is an ally of ours. Mm -hmm. That being said, we do not tolerate this type of humanitarian injustices. And even if they are an ally, I'm sure that we will come down hard. I don't know if that is going to be in the form of sanctions, what kind of punishments they would choose to do. I'm sure that we will try to preserve some form of alliance just due to its centricity in fighting terrorism and ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all of that. So I'm sure that we would like to maintain some form of relationship with Saudi Arabia, but I also know that our president has stated that he would go hard on Saudi Arabia if there that was in fact found out. He did not specify what. Um, I believe that it would probably even be in the form of sanctions, maybe even some renegotiation of deals, any of those things. And I would be willing to look at all options in that case should it come up when I'm in Washington. Okay. And um you know, one of the things that, that the president has talked a lot about is um, the border between Mexico and, and the United States. But Correct. here in Vermont, we have a border as mm -hmm. well, but it's with Canada. Mm -hmm. So what, um, do you think immigration is an issue for, for us in it Vermont? Is. Immigration is an issue for the state of Vermont. Most people don't realize that in this year alone, to date, we have more than doubled the amount of illegal immigrants that have been caught crossing the Canadian border into Vermont since last year. We're not through the year yet. That, that's a significant increase. And I live up on the border, so I see a lot of this. People were caught, most recently a gentleman was caught crossing the border with duct tape and ropes and guns and knives and all of these different things and had kidnapping charges in Canada. There are dangerous people that wish to cross the border and it's very important that we secure both borders to protect our country. You can't, by far, the Mexican border is something that we have the larger issue with, but it is not foreign to the state of Vermont either. Right, but you know, one of, one of the things, again, going back to, to farming, um, you know, I, I live uh, out in uh, Newfane, which is a lot of, lot of farms out there, yes. and they rely on, on uh, really immigrant, immigrant help. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's been happening to a lot of the farms is there's been a decrease in the immigrants that have come to work the farms, so that's mm -hmm. having an adverse impact. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there something that we can do to um, help the farmers who need this immigrant help, but yet um, protect the borders. How, what, immigrant, without cutting off, without cutting off the border. Well, legal immigration is always welcomed in the state of, you know, in the state of Vermont, and it's welcomed in the country. I'm not saying that we're going to cut off all immigration. It just needs to be legal. We need to understand who's in this country. And in regards to the farms, it's important that they are legal immigrants as well to make sure that their treatment is fair and just and that there, no one is being taken advantage of on either spectrum. I think that labor has always been an issue with farming and how to pay for it and it probably will continue to be so as long as the cost of production is so high and the cost of the product is so low. Once that balances out I think that that will be less of a problem for farms. And Well another, another big thing for uh, you know, especially you up there in, in the Northeast Kingdom, I look at, at all the dairy farms that are yes. that are closing. Yes. Um, you know, they're they're really consolidating. We're we're seeing a lot of the small farmers are selling off their cows to these larger farmers. Milk being a, a real problem. What what do you think we could do to help stabilize or um, yeah stabilize the number of 
of small farms that are in Vermont. Well, as I said, I think that we need to work towards getting people back into the realm of small farming and when it's fiscally viable to do so. Right. Small farming is integral to the community and also to the economy. And it is of concern to me that we lose so many of the smaller farms. And by that, I mean probably 500 head and less. Um, when you're talking about big conglomerate farms, currently they are the only ones still up and running and it would be detrimental if they too were to go out. So we need to stabilize the economy in general to protect the small farmers, bring people in, make sure that the milk market is not being monopolized, all of these things. I think that the current deal with Canada and Mexico is going to improve the dairy industry. It gives us another market opportunity and that will open up the markets a little bit elsewhere, I believe. But one of the key things is, is really looking at how we price milk. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, one of the one of the issues that we have in Vermont, we don't have the the same the same scales as other parts of the of the country. We, mm -hmm. Milk was you know we we were known for our milk. We were, yes. just as we were known for our cheese. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think we could do in terms of stabilizing um, the milk prices? I mean that that really requires a federal intervention. It would probably take federal intervention to stabilize currently, and. It may be possible to look at it and say, how can we completely change this process to do it better? Currently, we're always trying to fix the current system. Mm -hmm. And it should probably be looked at whether or not we need a new system completely. As I said, I, I'm in favor of moving government out of it and making it a private market that would support itself, but that is not an option currently, and we need to work towards correcting the long-standing issues that have been in place. In the 80s and 90s, farming went through one of the hardest hits possible in the 1980s and 1990s. It was one of the hardest hit times, and we did bounce back from that. So I have no doubt that we will bounce back from this, but we do need to make smart changes to see how we can prevent these things from happening in the future. And do, do you feel that, um, you know, this is an issue that's been around for a while. I mean, we, we've seen Correct. this. Uh, are there things that, that you've seen um, that are not being done that you think you're going to come in and, and, and be able to champion? I think that there's a lot of talk about being on the side of agriculture, but I think that there needs to be more actually done about the, the issue. There's a lot of talk and policy discussion, but I don't think that there's been a lot of action. And I would like to see more action being taken, but not rash action. I want this well thought out. I think that a committee should be put together with farmers included on it to talk about what they feel should be done. Mm -hmm. It's a very important to have everybody's voice at this table to figure out what needs to change. And farming is, as I said, integral to the community and integral to our food supply. So it's a very pressing issue that is not getting the attention that it deserves. Okay, thank you. So, you know, here, so we, we talked before about you know this is your your first run. How how, how are you how are you enjoying campaigning? <laughs> it's not bad. I, uh -huh. I I actually enjoy it. I I've traveled around the state and I've talked to people, and I've had so much opportunity to discuss what the true worries and concerns are of the people that would be the voters and it's been very enlightening I have to say it was my pleasure to do it I've been enjoying it and the thing that I hear most is thank you for running and how concerned they are that our country is not what it needs to be that it's being eroded their freedoms are being taken that the economy is bad all of these things is a concern that I hear the most mm -hmm. and what I find sad is that the rest of the country is doing pretty well economically and the state of Vermont is being left behind due to the policies that we currently have. And we need to turn that around so that we can start to reap some of the benefits that the rest of the country is enjoying. Hmm, okay. Now, so as you're traveling around, so how, how are you getting your, your message out? I mean, you're, you're going well, to... Well, you're helping me with that right now. Well, no. <laughs> yes, thank, okay. And yes, no, BCTV, I've... meet the candidates. A wonderful, <laughs> yes, we... No, what... Mainly, I travel around and I talk to people. I have a very dedicated group that helps me. I've got yard signs. If anybody wants some, they can always contact me or the county chairs and get yard signs. I've done a lot of interviews. I'm going to be doing some other mass media. And 
final push, as they say. Mm -hmm. But I've done the debate, and I've done these types of TV interviews, which have been helpful. I get good response from them, and I'm glad to know that they're so that people look into community television as a, a way to learn about their community. I think that's necessary, and I think that you do an important work with that. Thank you. But, so you've had an opportunity to, to debate? Uh, I debated uh, Peter Welsh oh. yesterday. Oh, yesterday? Yes, it's oh. on um, Vermont PBS and possibly VPR's website. Oh. So it, that's where it would be. Oh, okay. If that's... somebody wants to go look at it, I'd uh -huh. be happy to have them view the footage. And, and how did you do? I believe I did well. I've okay. not heard otherwise. Okay, that, that's good. <laughs> I, but it's really what the voters felt that I did. Um, I, I felt that it was a good debate and a good exchange of ideas. And there was even some ground where Peter Welsh could agree with me on things. So I think that that's important. I think that it's important to realize that it's not all partisan, that there are common issues that people can come together on. And whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you care about the same things. Mm -hmm. You just have a differing opinion about how to correct them. Right. And I think that that's, it, it's important to realize that we can maintain civil dialogue and make positive changes without becoming, you know, too polarized. So, so not only are you a uh, conservative Republican in Vermont, that's, Correct. you know, okay, so that, that puts you in a certain thing, uh, and you're a young conservative Republican. I so would now also we're be the first woman sent to Washington. And that's where I was going to oh. go. So, <laughs> you'd be the, I'm you'd a first be, of many things. First, first woman. Uh, so do you think that, you know, that we're, we're seeing a lot of women running for uh, political office and, and, and kudos to you really for, for running. Um, what, do you think that, that this is, um, you know, a, a, tr a trend that's happening that's going to be uh, something that the Republican Party will also embrace? Because I, I, are, are the Republican, uh, and forgive me for the not Republican. knowing this, I, know, I hear a lot about um, a lot of women on the Democratic side, you know, suddenly, you know, we're seeing an upsurge. What about on the, on the Republican side? Are you finding kindred? There are a lot of Republican women. I, I mm -hmm. think that it's a common misconception that women aren't as Republican as men. I think that in the state of Vermont, we are, there's not as many Republican women as other places, but there's a lot of them. And I do find that there are, but I mean, for instance, the lady running in Colchester, Desiree Moore, and there's, um, I believe, Sarah Toscano and Vicki Strong in my area. All of these women, um, I forgive me, I'm not naming right. all of them, but there are quite a few actually in the state of Vermont that go to the capital in Montpelier. Right. So I would just be the first woman sent to Washington right. from the state of Vermont. And Mississippi was the other state that had not done that and they recently did when their representative retired, mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was due to health issues right. and they re his replacement is a woman and I believe so that is now, now Vermont is the lone holdout, which surprised me being so progressive. Right. <laughs> but I think that it, the, the amount of women running in general is based on, as I said, the dissatisfaction with the way things are going. Whether they're Democrats or Republicans, they're looking to make a difference and they're worried about the future for their children and their grandchildren as I am. So it's important to understand that that is the, it's the instability that they feel that is drawing them to the polls. What drew me to the polls is the wish to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I know that I can make positive changes for the state of Vermont and that I can support the policies that I believe will forward our country and our state into a better place. So who, who's your, who's your mentor? Who, who, who has helped you the most to get to this point? A lot of people have helped me a great deal and I don't have time here to thank all of them, but I will say that the county chairs, I will give a shout out to all of the county chairs, mm -hmm. um, especially Orleans County Chair Chet Greenwood, who's mm -hmm. uh, been wonderful about helping me reach out to the party, get involved and the party has been wonderful in general. They've been very welcoming and very supportive. So all of those people were instrumental. And in order to get me as far as I've been, I would say it's my mother. She's the most inspirational person I've ever met. Okay. And very, very smart lady, very mm -hmm. smart lady. And she's been very supportive and helpful. And I will say that without her, I wouldn't be here. Okay, so. <laughs> well, that's, that's, you know, mom, moms are always, oh, yes. always important. <laughs> Let's shout out to mom. But um, has, has your mom been on the campaign trail with you? She's done different things. She, uh -huh. she doesn't usually travel around. She's right. kind of shy. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. So was I. Right. Um, 
but she's been very instrumental behind the scenes and she does a lot of my campaign management and things like that. So I have to say she's worked harder than anybody else besides me on this and right. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, have, have you, um, what, what about nationally? Is there, um, you've gotten a lot of help, you, you know, uh, from, from the Vermont Republicans, you say? I've been in touch with the National Party mm -hmm. as well, and again, very supportive. Uh -huh. So we're, we're working on how that will play out for me in the last coming weeks here before the election. And as I said, supportive and helpful and very uh, forthcoming with information that would be useful. Great. Well, and, and uh, well, let me... Uh, let me just say, uh, it, it's really wonderful that you're running, and we really Thank appreciate you. you stepping up to to do that. I it's think my that, pleasure. That's really that's really good. Um, Anya Tino, Republican candidate for U.S. House of Representatives, um, and uh, thanks for re really for coming all the way down. I really appreciate that. You can well, learn more you. about Anya by visiting her campaign website, Anya for the general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Remember, you can, you can actually vote early in person. You can vote absentee by mail. You can vote absentee hand-delivered. You can even call up and find out if you can vote at home on election day. The important thing is, please vote. Thanks for watching.